Welcome to the RJLT Economics. Today I want to talk about nuclear wars and specifically I want to answer the question um, can nuclear wars be won? And I know that there is this political declaration and a lot of people hold a belief that uh, nuclear wars cannot be won and as a result should not be fought. Now my argument in this recording, in this podcast, is that precisely because nuclear wars can be won, that it should not be fought. And there are two arguments um, that suggest that uh, nuclear wars can be won. And it cannot be won by anybody, but it can be won by somebody. And that somebody, as I will explain uh, in the second argument, uh, specifically is the, uh, the United States meaning that the second argument only applies to the United States. So let's start. The first argument that suggests that nuclear wars can be won is that, uh, is that uh, you, sh you see, the, the assumption is that once you launch your first nuclear strike, you, the, uh, the, the attack will retaliate with full force of its nuclear arsenal and as a result you will also lose that's the argument that no th that's why it's argued that uh, nuclear wars cannot be won and uh, this is mutually assured destruction that's that doctrine a mad doctrine but uh, um, that is assuming three things uh, number one it assumes that Oh, basically, no, 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 not, not, uh, 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 it assumes these three uh, exceptions don't take place. And there are three exceptions that could lead to a possible um, failure in this mutually assured destruction or failure to retaliate. The first one is if in the first initial strike, you take out the decision center of, uh, decision center of, of the attack and there will not be a coordinated retaliation as a result. And all you have to do is to weather whatever uncoordinated uh, uh, retaliation there may be, and uh, it is much likely to survive that. And secondly, if the decision center of the attack is not destroyed, uh, the decision makers nevertheless may make the conscious decision to actually accept defeat because that is with the with the knowledge that if there is if they initiate an a retaliation that will be the end of human civilization and uh, for the good of the human civilization perhaps they will uh, they will accept that perhaps we sacrifice our people, but we give the uh, give the chance to the rest of the world to um, to live on, and uh, uh, that is a very humanist decision. And I think uh, um, it is quite possible that the, the decision makers of the attack will actually decide not to retaliate. And of course, the exception is, of course, there is this uh, uh, doomsday trigger, right? This automated retaliation, but that is just a fantasy. It does not exist. The decision makers need to uh, need to actually pull the trigger, and uh, uh, it's a possible, or it's a possibility that the decision makers would decide to stand down. And the third possibility is that even though the decision center is not destroyed and the decision maker wants to retaliate, they may lack the sufficient uh, readiness to retaliate in time. What this means is that uh, the delivery systems may not be filled, uh, they may not be well maintained, uh, maybe insufficient amount of nuclear warheads are ready to be, to be used in, uh, before they are destroyed by the, uh, by the initial attacker. 
So this means that the um, any retaliation that is initiated may not be sufficient to fully destroy the uh, initial attacker, and uh, as a result, that will lead to a win by the uh, by the first uh, initial attacker. Right. So it is only when all three of these factors are annulled, uh, they are made uh, invalid, that uh, we can we can see we can say that the attacker will also be destroyed, and uh, that's mutually assured destruction. But um, that is far from uh, a certainty. And however low or high that certainty uh, that probability is. Uh, the possibility is it is not negligible, and um, when given the choice between um, essentially losing all power, essentially a failure, uh, for some people um, using this option, however slim the the chance of escaping uh, destruction is, uh, it is better than an assured. Uh, destruction in a different way. I mean, not uh, by nuclear weapons, but by uh, losing power, losing control over its dominions, over the uh, the rest of the world. Right. That's the first argument. But this, there is also a second argument, and this specifically applies to the United States. That is, the United States um, is. Uh, actually quite evenly developed. I know that a lot of people say that um, there is this flyover country in the middle of the United States where there, nothing is there, just farms. But even, the, even be that as may, the United States has the East Coast, the West Coast, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and the, the Great Lakes, and also along the Mississippi, all these areas are quite industrialized. So in order to fully destroy the United States through a nuclear retaliation, there needs to be really a lot of warheads, a lot of successful deliveries by those warheads across the continent. That is a much higher ask than for the United States to launch an in initial strike on its current counterparts uh, its counterparts, namely Russia and China. Russia is uh, completely unevenly developed. Uh, if you take out a couple of its big uh, population centers, not only you take out their decision-making system, you take out their economy, you take out their uh, their their. Uh, the transportation you take out the basically you take out the cohesion of the of the country. It becomes uh, much more scattered. As a result, China is a heavily populated country, but its populations are all um, almost completely uh, reside uh, almost completely reside on the uh, on the east coast. And uh, in those large city belts uh, or metropolises, and um, it is still much more feasible to take to take out one coast than uh, than for someone to take uh, take out the entirety of a continent. So uh, what I'm saying here is that for the United States, if it launches an initial attack. Considering that it also would be able to take out a lot of the retaliatory capacities of the attack, um, it's actually quite possible uh, that the, any retaliation will not fully destroy the uh, the United States, even if all the first three uh, three factors are annulled that I mentioned in the first argument. And that is to say that if the United States launches an, in an initial nuclear strike, it could actually win. And uh, this is not just I saying it. Uh, this is um, also the doctrine of a lot of the... Um, uh, actually, not the military doctrine, but a... a a, a belief and um, 
as part of the America's nuclear planning in the 50s and the 60s, a lot of people believed that nuclear wars can be won by the United States because with、uh, their specifics that I mentioned, they they believe that the Soviet Union will lose 130 million people and the United States will lose 30, 40, 50 million people, and、uh, as a result, the, the United States will win、uh, because the Soviet Union w- would have been. Are fully destroyed. Well, the United States is just suffers a very heavy blow, but remains the dominant power in the world. And by taking over the natural resources of、uh, the Soviet Union and taking over the dominions of the Soviet Union, it could、uh, quickly recuperate. Right?、Uh, perhaps some of its land will be destroyed, but it can take Siberia. It can take a, a few other places. So. Uh, that could be a good trade-off, and、uh, this line of thinking, even though、uh, over the years, o- over the decades, have、uh, become less mainstream, and people have,、uh, I think, adopted the the belief that nobody is going to fight a nuclear war because everyone knows that it is so horrible that they cannot win. A lot of people will die, and it is such cruelty to、um, to expose your own population to such nuclear, uh, uh, such a horrible thing as nuclear annihilation. But、uh, let's not uh, uh, ov- overestimate the conscience of、uh, a lot of、um, people, and、uh, I think there is a real risk that some people、uh, in positions of power in the United States actually believe that、uh, this can be this can be done, and this should be the、uh, last result. Right,、uh, a lot of people, I think,、uh, would think that this is not on the table. It's not the last result. It's completely unthinkable. But、uh, a lot of people in positions of power may believe that this is actually last result, and、uh, we need to be conscious about this. And、um, one thing that I want to also say about、uh, A, a a a an option, however horrible it is, is let's look at the、uh, the the Ukrainian the Ukraine conflict. I think it is very horrible. It's it's not a good option for Russia to go into Ukraine.、Um, I think it is actually bad for Russia. It was bad for Russia, but、uh, of course. Uh, I don't want to say that Russia is not provoked; is unprovoked.、Uh, Russia was provoked indeed, and it was、uh, provoked. It had been provoked for decades,、um, and、uh, there was this pressure that is building both externally, pushing、uh, by NATO pushing eastward, and、uh, internally by a growing sentiment inside Russia that wants to push back. And so、um, we're facing with this,、uh, this, this,、uh, these pressures coming from both outside and inside, and with、uh, the knowledge, I think,、uh, by the decision makers、uh, in Russia,、uh, that's、uh, essentially. Let's just put it very straightforwardly: that Putin thinks that he still has、uh, a lot of、uh, enough stamina to be in charge of、uh, to see the end、uh, of. This、uh, of this conflict, but if it's、uh, if this conflict were to take place in five years,、um, when he is he gets older, he he will、uh, he will not have enough、uh, this level of stamina, and、uh, he may not be able to see this conflict through, and、uh, he will not be able to participate partake in the rebuilding、uh, of、uh, of eastern Ukraine of of Russia and.、Uh, Right, so all these considerations、uh, in mind, and given the the knowledge that even though attacking is a horrible thing, atta- because it costs、uh, Russia dearly, right,、uh, diplomatically、uh, and also economically, but、um, they believe that they can win this, and、uh, when this so when they believe that this can be won. Um, even though it is a horrible thing, 
they would. Uh, it, it is not a. It's not taken off the table, and it was the last resort, and they resorted to it. Similarly, for the United States, uh, I think nuclear first nuclear strike uh, is an option, and uh, it's a valid option. It's a very horrible option. But it's an option. It's a last resort, and we should be conscious about this. And so we need to make sure that they do not resort to it. Okay, that's、uh, all I have to say today.、Uh, thank you very much for listening. And、uh, of course, check out my website drglt.com, where I've posted a lot of photos uh, of uh, of China recently. Thank you very much again. Have a great day.